Welcome back, everybody, to VGVN3 with Frodan and PVDDR. Our next series is Fake versus Colento, but before we go into the match discussion, I want to remind you guys about the chance to enter for, uh, to win the Zeus Mini Cyberpower PC. If you go to the link or type in exclamation point giveaway, you can find out more about how to win this PC. All you have to do is basically sign up for the newsletter and find out more about what VGVN is. Uh, and just to kind of give you a little bit of a brief break while we uh, break down while we have a couple of minutes, uh, it's about the v Video Game Voters Network who help combat harmful legislation against video games and voting rights. Uh, they promote educational, scientific, artistic benefits of gaming, um, and joining is free and easy. All you have to do is take a couple minutes, sign up, um, and use the link, or once again, go to the bottom of the Twitch chat or type in giveaway and find out more information. In the meantime, our next series is Fake versus Calento. It's going to be one of the open browsers bracket players who qualify through the uh, the 256 man players and now has an opportunity to challenge the current champion uh pv are you excited for to see how fake's gonna do against the the reigning champ for vgv number two yeah definitely and fake is one of the guys that won the qualifier but he's also pretty good uh you know he, i think he was six in ladder so he could definitely be up there with those guys so it'd be an interesting match that's right i was Told here that Fake doesn't have a webcam. We do have his POV, but uh, you know he did, we don't have the actual recording of his webcam. He's not one of these very popular or famous streamers. He's a guy who just likes to play Hearthstone. He has a good practice group of buddies who help him, uh, but we don't know too much about him other than just a little picture. But if you want to know what he looks like, you can help hop on over to Liquid Hearth. He does have a, a little bit of a, a face there you can see in the preview. In the meanwhile, let's go to the staging and see what these guys have chosen to ban. Uh, Fake is primarily a Shaman player, and he farmed Hunters on his way up to this tournament. So it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't ban Hunter PV. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, not only does he not ban Hunter, but he also doesn't have a Hunter deck himself. So he, he has written that uh, he doesn't think Hunter is that good, and that he's had a positive win percentage against it, and his Shaman deck especially. Uh, he, he mentioned in his article that he, he had an over 67% win percentage over 100 games. That's wow. pretty huge. He definitely does not fear Hunter. The six, uh, two, thir two thirds at a time is pretty good win rate last time I checked, especially against a tier one deck that everyone's labeling as uh, the best deck in the game overall. So a great start for fake to the tournament to be able to have very good win percentages with shaman it's a deck that he said that he's played for months and that he's well prepared and he's even paying homage to Sixo, another member of the tournament who qualified through the open bracket by playing this shaman deck in particular now colenso isn't going to be playing hunter to lead things off he's going to start things with his token druid deck that we've come to know and love from cloud nine um, do you have any opinions really quick on how these decks match up before we go into the first game uh, honestly, no. Uh, <laughs> I would actually have to watch the games and see. All right, well, that's a great segue. Let's just jump to the board and see how <laughs> these guys stack up. It's it's a little bit new. It's hard to say if this token druid's good against shaman. You know, the traditional druid that's mid range and slower. Shaman used to have an edge over, right? You can efficiently remove, build the board, and druid doesn't have that much access to AOE, especially if spell power has been removed from their deck list and swipe isn't as easy as way to remove totems. Um, now that you have to fight a little bit more honestly with minions. Maybe that's still more the case, but then how you know now who's the actual player building the board? You have a lot of sticky minions, you have cards like Echoing Ooze, Haunted Creeper. It might be a little tricky for Shaman to fight back, but uh, Shaman's also one of these decks where it's very flexible, it can usually do whatever it wants if everything lines up accordingly. Yeah, it feels like both players have you know a decent early game, a decent mid game, and a decent late game, so any of them could win at any stage of the game. So it's going to be up to them to, to define what the game is about. You know, if someone comes up with a very, like, very fast start, for example, then the game would be about the early game. But it's definitely possible that both players have slow hands with cards like Force of Nature, you know, seven mana guys, all like here, which they have. And then the game would be about the long game. Yeah, a so, little bit of rough draws for both these guys not to have... Like, basically half their hand is going to be sitting there for a while, unless Kalento sees an opportunity to use Savage Roar early on but no need to he's drawn to some of the other minions that can curve out nicely although now kind of presenting with an interesting choice because the harvest golem is kind of the bully on the board 
And as much as he wants to fill out his curve, uh, he has to kind of be mindful not to lose too much because this druid is all about momentum. Um, you know, I heard it from Strife Crow itself. You want to try to protect your minions, or if you feel like you're going to lose, you have to kind of cash in as, as quick as you can. Yeah, but I don't think he could have played anything else there. He couldn't play the Wrath on the on the Golem. There are just so many better targets, like the Flame Token, you know, a Feral Spirit Token. Uh, I think just advancing his own board is better than you know trying to fight the inevitable, which is that that Golem is going to kill your one to this. Yikes! And Feral Spirits is one of the cards you're definitely afraid of. An Innervate draw isn't even that useful, considering that Kalendo doesn't have many ways to accelerate into a powerful minion. He's kind of in a weird spot right now. Might even be forced to try and push through these Spirit Wolves with something like Force of Nature. Depends on how yeah. he kind of evaluates the situation. Yeah, Innervate in, in Kalendo's deck is a little bit different than in other decks, because in the early game, it's very good. Like, if you know, can Innervate out a Shade turn 1, that's very, very powerful. But at the same time, you don't have as many 7 and 8 drops as the other uh, Druid decks. So sometimes you just draw Innervate late, and, you know, it doesn't do anything. It helps with the combo. It makes, you know, getting to 9 mana easier. But the combo is a late game thing anyway. So you don't often care about, you know, having to wait to get to 9 mana. Okay, so he is going for the Force... Oh my god, I call it for... I'm Savage Roar, I meant that. So Kalendo is going to go into Savage Roar play. And this is the best way to kind of address it um, that we were thinking about earlier. You can pseudo-clear the board in a way, kind of like take a lot of the threats off. Uh, Shaman will be overloaded. And in the end, this is exactly um, the opportunity that you wanted to try and fight back for the board position, which is the most crucial thing uh, for this Druid deck. Yeah, here we see that he uses Wrath instead of using his Hero Power. So he clearly doesn't care about the, the one life that attacking would cost him, but he wants to make sure he has a play next turn. So his deck has four very powerful, it has five actually, very powerful uh, five cost minions. It has Low Tab, it has two Spectre Knights, and two Druid Elder Claws. So he just wants to make sure he gives himself the best chance to hit one next turn. But he basically cycles that Wrath away. All right. Uh, now Fake hey. hits a, a really t tough turn here because it looks like he doesn't have a very clear play. Uh, it just seems to be Totem. Yeah, I mean, doesn't, you know, what could he do? A lightning bolt that Golem that doesn't accomplish anything again. Alright, well, Kalento actually picks up a very important card. Ancient of Lore is one of those... Uh, it's just another way to turn on the, the gas once again in the late stages of the game. when Because a lot of the time you're pushing out almost every card and you have very few by the late stages uh, for this Druid deck. So having Ancient of Lore is one of the key cards to make sure that you have longevity in the later stages of the game like you mentioned. Oh, not bad. All right, Kalento has Echoing Ooze and Defender of Argus. That's one of the best synergies that you can come to expect with this two mana cost card. Yeah, he drew his combo. Second combo in the deck. Hmm. Now, what are the best targets to kind of go along with it? Oh, sorry. I Okay, I realized. Last turn when I cycled into cycled his wrath instead of attacking, he couldn't have attacked because he had already attacked with the severed war. Oh, because he correct. couldn't have hero power. Oh, sorry about that. All right, uh, Kalento has Defender Vargas go down on this current board and goes for the guaranteed kill and saves his echoing ooze. And it's something in the back of your mind that you want to also make sure not to overextend into Lightning Storm. Um, if he went for Defender of Argus, it seemed like he wouldn't be able to pick up a good trade. And then he'd kind of make himself vulnerable for an easy cleanup on his opponent's side. Fake comes yeah, up definitely. on turn 6 when he has Fire Elemental. Yeah, at the same time, he doesn't have any great targets. You know, he can kill any of Kalenta's creatures, but... You know, just getting the 6-5 in, in play is going to be pretty good, but the effect's not going to be huge. I guess that's the best you can do with a Fire Elemental in this matchup. Yeah, I, yeah, I imagine... Think... Or I imagine you're just going to play Fire Elemental, you know, kill the Spider and then attack either the 1-2 or a Spiderling with his own Spider. 
Yeah, I was yeah. about to evaluate whether or not killing Defender of Argus and reducing the amount of targets, but um, killing off the taunt and starting to work on the token seemed to be a, a really good compromise as well. Yeah, I, th I think that's better. Yeah, I think attacking the token is also better because the 1-1, one, one, you know, it's going to be... You're going to take one more damage from the 2-1, but at a cost of removing one extra minion or... Ooh. Well, check this out. Kalento has a full clear available. Um, and that yeah. allows him to start pushing a little bit, but he also has the ability to go for Ancient of Lore, so it's a kind of an interesting choice here. Ooh, he chooses to go for Ancient of Lore. Okay, interesting. So that's he assumes that's going to trade the Fire Elemental, and that's fine with him. And we're approaching the, the nine minute turn, the point where you know it's actually dangerous for Fake to leave a bunch of creatures in play, because Kalento could just go Force of Nature and Savage World. He actually has both in hand. Yeah, and now that he's evaluated the current situation, he's going to try to effectively give all of his minions taunt, force his opponent to have uh, the the responsibilities of cleaning up his board, and in two turns he has the 14 damage plus whatever can stick, um, not to mention he has direct damage to potentially also seal the deal. So Kalento opening up more possibilities by playing it uh, based off his draws. I like it. Yeah, he, he has effectively 18 damage in his hand. So if he, if he just uses hero power and swipe this turn, that's already 19. So if Fake doesn't have any taunts, bad. Or a way to gain life, but I don't think he runs it. So Kalanto is basically setting up the wing in two turns here. Hmm. Alright, Fake, by the way, has um, uh, several options at his disposal. But trying to figure out which one's the best to kind of remove everything. Um. Hmm. Yeah, it's not looking great. I mean, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be able to get rid of most of the creatures, but at this point, it doesn't really matter. Oh my. Well, it seems like Fake's gonna try and use even a little bit of his uh, own health here to try and kill some of these minions off. Yeah, now Kalanta, you know, might not even need this wipe. Is it possible that Fake is just, you know, trying to go for the kill next turn? I don't think he, he will not have enough. No, I mean, Alec here and Rockbiter is one of your combos, and yeah. I feel like you recognize that you need to use one of these Rockbiters now. You still have a lot of damage, and as much as you want to save Alec here for a dream burst, it's, not, it's <laughs> kind of optimistic at best um, to yeah. be able to get off that combo for sure. Well, that's going to basically swipe the board, so removing all pretense of ever dying next turn. And now he just has to wait and kill his opponent with the combo. Yeah, this is assuming that even if his board clears, his opponent has to play a Taunter, and Alakir yeah. cannot come down either because of the overload from the Lightning Bolt. So yeah, exactly. Fake is in big trouble here. Yeah, well, Fake, fake is that. He doesn't know it yet, but... What to do? Even if he, you know, hits a Taunt token and then hexes his own Fire Elemental, he'll just do that. You know what's also somewhat hilarious here? If you hex a minion, it also gets two damage off the Savage Roar. So it's like, are you really removing <laughs> damage off the board here? Yeah. I mean, right now, Fake knows he cannot beat the combo. So he has to see if he can beat, you know, either just Force of Nature or either just Savage Roar. And that's what his plan. He hopes Colanta doesn't have the combo because if he does, he's just dead. So probably he would probably play around the second force of nature rather than sorry the first force of nature rather than the second savage war. Uh, no, it still puts himself dead to force of nature here. Uh, there's there's several ways that he could die here. Um, oh yeah, he yeah swipe. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but like he hasn't seen Druid of the Claws. He hasn't seen ways to kind of the charges that can do damage. Uh, Kalento's got this guy covered. <laughs> very yeah. easily and he's gonna again go on a, another win streak with his druid deck that's been doing well for him in the past and now Kalento is up 1-0 still as dominant as ever yeah Kalento 4-0 on, on the week here okay well now fake will have to turn immediately to his priest deck to fight against druid and I know priest can give this druid deck 
um, a, a lot of trouble. Uh, you can take the trades very effectively early on with things like Zombie Chow and keep healing it. Not to mention there's always a snowball potential with having something like Undertaker and then constantly drawing cards off of it with uh, something like Northshire Cleric. So this deck is very potent and it's starting to grow a lot in popularity. Uh, what, what do you think about including cards like Bevin, Baron Rivendare as one of the interesting tech choices uh, for this deck? I think it's interesting, but it's kind of a win more card. Uh, you know, sometimes it's going to be great when you have Sledge Belchers or Cairns, Sylvanas. And sometimes it's going to be horrible when you have Zombie Child, sometimes it's going to do nothing. It, it is never going to be, you know, completely dead, because you like having a high toughness minion in Priest, you can attack and hero power it. Uh, and, you know, it's good with Defender Fargoes, which he only runs one of. I don't know, my, sorry, my inclination is that it's not good enough, and that I would rather play a second Defender of Argos. But I can definitely see spots where he wins you the game where a defender wouldn't. Like, you know, such as the zombie child, Baron Rivendell, uh, all can I so priest combo, which I think is more of a fancy thing than an actual good thing, but it, it is pretty cool if it happens. I can always get behind style points, that's for sure. I hand it mm -hmm. out pretty liberally in my broadcasting. Let's go into game number two and see if Colento can continue this win streak or will Fake finally be able to draw first blood on this un seemingly unstoppable player as a Colento is the reigning champion and he's still winning. Now last tournament, I believe his overall record was something along the lines of 17 and four, where he was just having <laughs> an insane win record over 75% and it doesn't seem like it's gonna be stopping anytime soon. Yeah, and this is not, you know, 75% on ladder, it's 75% against the best players in the world. Where the second best player, you know, had 55%. So it's just way ahead. And it's impressive that he does it with a lot of different decks too. You know, round one, he picked up Warrior, 3 yard. This round started with Druid. You know, it's not like he has one very powerful deck that just beats everything. He's just beating everyone with a lot of different decks. So that's super impressive. He's also one of the most experienced Hearthstone players. Did you read his interview at all, whatsoever, by the way? As he starts off with um, Innervated Shade, which is much better than Innervated uh, Harvest Gold. Oh yeah, it's um, the best possible start for him. I did not... I, I watched his interview. I did not read one. Well, uh, he answered a few questions, and one of the questions was, how many games did you play of Hearthstone, Colenso? And, and then the answer was, in the five digits, he's played... <laughs> tens of thousands of games of hearthstone um and i think i actually wait is it tens of thousands of is he have like ten thousand wins or ten thousand games i don't know either way this oh guy God. has played an insane amount so he <laughs> knows matchups like the back of his hand and that's partially why he's such a powerful player now immediately introduced with the choice of how he wants to kind of utilize this turn and his mana does he use his coin or does he use his does he just kind of keep uh, more of a defensive approach here because right now you have to kind of recognize with this Druid deck, are you more of the aggressive player? Are you more of the control player? And it's very rare that you're the control player. A lot of times you're trying to turn on the aggression, but you just have to I, kind of know when is the key. Yeah, I think he has to attack that Undertaker now. Uh, because, you know, the Shade is going to grow if he doesn't, but so is the other minion. And, you know, as much as you don't want to lose your shirt trade early on, if he trades for both the Undertaker and the Zombie Child, that's already good. You know, you did spend an inner to play it, so it doesn't feel like it's too much, but I feel, yeah, I feel like you have to attack here. You can't let that minion grow. And, and the problem if he doesn't attack is that, you know, he can attack the, the Harvest... If he plays an Art Death Rattle minion, attacks the Harvest Golem, then attacks the guy with the Zombie Chow, it's just all too far behind, I think, doing nothing. I think attacking is better. I must consider... Yeah, I agree with that analysis. And um, the best part is, it's able to kind of go two for one. And now your opponent's kind of, uh, you're, you're really hoping your opponent doesn't have Dark Cultist. So when he sees Injured Blade Master, that's going to make Kalento pretty happy that he can answer immediately on the board. Yeah, he can just attack him here at Bar Raid. And here we see that, you know, Baron Rivendell and Rivendell in Fake's hand, which is, you know, so far not going to be good, but could set up a very sweet turn. With this ledge voucher, for example. You know, it is good that it's a minion that you can just play, and you know it's not gonna die. Because it has seven toughness. So it even kills the two one here. So it's actually gonna be pretty good in this game. 
So maybe I was wrong. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a minion that's standalone. At least that's something nice. Defender of Argus, like compared to Defender of Argus, it's just a 2-3. Uh, yeah. Kalento gonna recognize that you the 3 damage is not worth it compared to the headache that Baron Rivendare can present. Yeah, and it definitely, you know, look at this curve. Now he plays Ledge Boucher, and Kalento has to remove that into uh, his Modulatus before he can attack the Baron again. So, unless Kalento draws, you know, a swipe or a silence to get rid of that Baron, uh, might be in trouble here. Yeah, it's going to be tricky. Although he does have a great turn 5, Innervate Ancient Allure is often as good as it gets on yeah. turn 5, because he's able to put out a 5-5 five, five body and draw two other cards to potentially secure your following turns. But Fake also has a good turn, which is, you know, assuming that 2-3 guy doesn't die, which is Cabal Shadow Pristed. He's going to swing the tables by a lot. Oh, you're right. Hmm. I assume the Defender Parkers is not going to suicide itself into this ledge voucher. Where shall I strike? Okay, so Clancy just plays a taunt guy. Does not go for the intervention LR play. Yeah, it's kind of uncommon to see Jew of the Claw go in taunt mode in this deck because you're trying to be aggressive. Uh, but given on the board state and also the difficulty that Priest traditionally has against um, mm. four attack minions, I think you can kind of do it. Plus, he knows that it's unlikely that this deck runs something like Holy Fire. If he's seen, you know, the Undertaker, Baron Rivendare combinations, it's most likely that he's cut a lot of the spells in favor of more of a minion centric position. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which I think is the most common build right now. I think, you know, if I play against Priest, I would expect it to be the Undertaker build and not the Holy Fire build. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, so he did draw a way Ooh. to deal with the Baron Riven there. Yeah. In so fact, now he can um... play the... Yeah, now he can play the... Hmm. Uh, kill the Baron and then kill the Ledge Voucher. Which still won't be silencing great for him. first, though? Because then you can actually use your hero power to clear, and then you can pick a little bit of a better trade this way. Yeah, that's... Also possible. Yeah, that's probably a better play, actually. You know, he can just hero power the Baron now and you know, get rid of another minion with his 4-6. Or even go for the face here, but probably not. Yeah, that, that play is better, I think. Alright, slightly better alternative for Colenso. Now, what does he want to kill off? Because there's no death rattle minions. Does he want to use this opportunity to snipe, a, you know, another big minion, like either the up there? and give your opponent a hard time. Or you can kind of pick up immediate value, kill off um, things, or even attack the face, like you said. Yeah, and I he think does he had... have Force of Nature Savage Roar, so he has to kind of calculate everything. Yeah, I think he had to kill the, the one Tefnus Baron there, because, you know, you don't know if you're going to be able to do that next turn, because you could just hero power it and heal it back. So this is, you know, a one-time opportunity that is just better than, you know, gaining up on the 4-5, for example. All right, Fake picks up Undertaker, which still isn't um, exactly what he needed at the moment. Uh, but it's That's something that he can fine. kind of build up on the board. Yeah, he does have that loot hoarder, so you know, it's going to be at least a 2-3. But here, uh, by not attacking a minion, Kalenta, I guess, leaves himself vulnerable. Yeah, no, attacking the face is better. You, know, you often just want to attack Priest's minions when you can. You just want to kill them when you can because of the hero power nature. So now, for example, he gave a fake the option of killing the, the first sex and not losing anything. But it seems like fake is not going to go for that. He's just going to attack with the 2-3 anyway. So that makes Kalenta's attack to the face very good. Because you never want to do what your opponent wants you to do. So if the guy wanted to trade the 2-3 for the first sex, Kalenta doesn't want to do that. So going for the face here just got him, you know, four extra damage. Yeah, especially if he has combo already in hand, it makes him that much more inclined to try and do his best to calculate his damage potential. Speaking of the combo, by the way, Kalento is going to innervate that out and try to address the board state because it's getting way out of control and he needs to do as best as he can to clean everything up here. Yeah, this is never a good position for this particular deck to be in, that you have to you know, use your combo to clear the board. 
because the deck doesn't have that good of a late game. Its combo is the late game. And if you do that, you know, how are you going to win the game? He has the Ancient of War in his hand right now, which, you know, means he, he has alternatives if the game goes longer. But he can't be feeling good about using the combo to just clear the board. You basically use it as a swipe. So that can be feeling good for Kalento. Yeah, and you know what? It's um, it's kind of cool too because it's clear that your opponent doesn't have something like Northshire Cleric because he could have slide in next turn. So if you can outpace him in cars, oh man! Ooh, look at how are you gonna outpace draws. him with cars with those draws though? Oh my goodness! Yeah, and you know now the combo is out of the way, and his opponent is still at twenty six life, and he doesn't have cards like Ragnaros, cards like Sylvanos. You know he has he doesn't have a lot of ways to you know, just win the game here. Okay, so Priest is just going to go back to the drawing board, which is without Baron Rivendare and Zombie Chow combos, considering that two of those cards already have been used. Uh, you just have to win through the good old-fashioned minion whacking to the face. Uh, but Ancient of Lore is now going to be easily addressed. Uh, you have Shadow Word Death. You only have one of them, but the good news is that there's not many other targets to use Shadow Word Death on. Uh, meanwhile, it seems like Fake's starting to pick up more ways where he can establish a good board. He's got uh, ways to buff the health. Uh, he's got some of the stronger minions that he can heal in place of four or five. Things are starting to look up for him. Yeah, here, uh, you know, you're pretty happy to use Shadow Word Death here because that's basically the only target you'll ever have. And yeah, he was probably just deciding whether he was going to go for Sylvanas or the Blade Master in addition to the Shadow Word Death. Well, he drew Holy Nova now, so he can actually just attack the guy. And Holy Nova both away, but I think you just want to use Shadow Word Death here because you know that's the only target. So if you don't use it, it's like using it, except you know, yeah, this is much better. Oh, definitely, I think so. Now, what do you choose to heal? He goes for the Injured Blade Master. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, interesting. I mean, it means he can't get you know swipe attacked, for example. Yeah, I mean, right. Karen's already pretty resilient because there's another 4 or 5 body, so he kind of has the Sludge Belcher effect of stacking 8 health. Uh, but that's something that you're kind of annoyed by. The Silence and Wrath is probably the best way to deal with um, the Karen, even though it is a little card inefficient uh, because you're not able to kind of get everything. Karen killed off a of minion and took another card. But this is another way to just climb back in it. Priest has ways to get a lot of advantage uh, over Druid over the course of time. Thought Seal could uh, pick up some really important cards here for Fake, if that's yeah, what he decides is the best move. Yeah, a bunch of very good hits. Uh, not as much in this Druid deck as in other Druid decks, because, you know, at this point you'd really rather hit the Sylvanas, Ragnaros, and stuff like that. But precisely because your opponent does not have those cards, you don't need to hit them. You know, you're happy with anything, because you know he's not going to have a trump. Hmm. So did that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was taking it in and also analyzing the, you know, fake's play of maybe just dropping Sylvanas because his opponent did no use his Keeper to go up already. His second Keeper, not to mention. So, most likely he can't silence this unless he has another really weird card that surprises him out of the blue. And yeah. not to mention, it is a 5-5 five, five body that's really intimidating, hard to get rid of. Yeah, definitely. He could kill it. You know, not swipe or something, but you know you're going to steal at least a mini volume with that, so... It's always going to get some value. Yeah, here Every we get the point counts. of the game. Yeah, now, we get the point of the game where a Priest is doing what Priest wants to do, which is attack minions and heal its own minions, which is when its hero power is the strongest. Because, you know, it's not that good if you're just healing yourself or healing guys are going to die anyway, but when you get into spawn where your creatures are bigger than your opponent's creatures, it's basically like, you know, playing a new creature every time you use the hero power. Not, not as strong, but, you know, on a smaller level, it's basically generating good creatures. So that's, Fake's going to be feeling pretty happy about that. I think he might first blood Kalento here. Yeah, I mean, he's got a board clear. He's got ways to establish a, a strong board afterwards, too. I mean, if you have the opportunity to wipe the board and your opponent doesn't have many cards, with this deck, I think you should usually take it. But first, oh, yeah. you have the opportunity to Thought Steal, so let's see what you get. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, you have to clear the board here, because the only way you can lose is if Colento has a second copy of the combo. So you don't want to leave him with an minions that he can actually lethal you. And it's, you know, pretty free to clear the board here. It just spends your turn, but you don't lose any creatures, you don't lose any spells that you care much about. And all you miss is doing 9 damage to your opponent, but, you know, how's he gonna win from there? You don't need this 9 damage now, you just need not to die, and eventually you win. Well, that's gonna be really difficult for Kalunza to bounce back from. There are just, there's, I mean, the minions are very durable, and it looks like Kalunzo has picked up a card that's just gonna have to cycle in order to deal with it. Yeah. Wow, well, he drew, you know, he drew a good sequence of cards. He actually gets to kill the Sylvanas here, but I feel like it's too little too late. Yeah, he needed those removals to be able to allow his minions to push in for more damage. Now he's using his removal just to not take <laughs> more damage and die. And now yeah. from here, Fake just has to draw minions. You know, this Dark Cultist is actually really important, but his deck is filled with so many minions that he's most likely going to be hitting a couple every single turn. Wow. Nourish yeah. <laughs> to draw more. going to hit a lot every single turn, apparently. Yep. Yeah, but at this point, honestly, Fake didn't even need anything. You know, the 4-9 is just the king of the board, because he has enough removal in his hand to kill a 5-5. Five five. So I don't think Colento has a way to actually deal with that guy, even if there weren't any other minions. What just happened? But Spectre Knight, one of the best cards to, deal, uh, to attack the Priest with, but not when the Priest already has an existing board. Uh, I think at this stage, Colento just kind of waiting it out to see, well, one, if there's an opportunity to come back if your opponent gets careless, but two, to also get some intel on what his opponent runs card-wise. He saw things like Baron Rivendare where he's going to be accounting for in the next game. So it, even though Colento looks like he won't be able to win this game, uh, he's also doing his best to try to prepare for the rest of the series. Yeah, I mean, if he sees that Defender of Argus, for example, that's already good information. Mm -hmm. So it could be misleading because Fake only runs one, and if he sees it, he might think, oh, his, you know, he's playing the Defender of Hogs version, and my thing has too, but it's still better to know. But is it better to a point where Fake just shouldn't play it? Oh, I'm always a fan of hiding information if you don't have to show it. Consider... Yeah. My but it seems like he's getting really close to killing his opponent. Yeah, he does have a swipe. Yeah, he's just a couple points here, honestly, and he just calculate just to see if, um, you know, any kind of possibility to. I don't think if yeah. he wrath for anything, he would have been able to draw lethal, so. Oh, Kalento draws the last piece of the combo here, second Savage Roar, but there's no application of it whatsoever. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's a concede um, as soon yeah. as Kalento kind of draws his conclusions. So taking a couple of seconds to kind of think back and evaluate, what were some of the key moments you feel like in this game that kind of went wrong for Colento? Was it just too much board presence on, you know, that he had to use his innervate combo early on? Um, yeah, I think so. Popular, like, Ancient of Lore? You know, the, the very swingy moment was, I think, when the Kabbalah Shadow Priest told the 2-3 two, Defender of Argus, which just swung the board in such a way that it became very hard for Colento to recover. And then he just snowballed because he had to use his card suboptimally after that. Like, you know, the Force of Nature combo, which did not do what it was intended to do in that deck. So, I think that's how you beat that Dree deck with Priest. You know, you just, your early game is often better, and your late game is also better. So, all you have to do is make sure you don't die to the combo, and then it becomes very hard to lose the game. Alright, well, Kalento is mortal, as it turns out. But his mm -hmm. Warrior deck has yet to lose in this tournament. And he's done well with it in the previous series against Firebat, but has it been tested against Priest? This deck can beat the Priest deck pretty handily, but it also can just sometimes lose if you don't have the right answers at the right time. Uh, you know, this card, this this deck kind of feels a little bit like Zoo against the Warrior. You're just trying to be really aggressive, and sometimes you're just crossing your fingers your opponent doesn't have Fiery War X. Yeah, Fiery War X is huge against that deck. Because you, you were the aggressive deck if you're a priest against warrior. Most of the time. Sometimes, you know, you play the long game, you, you thought still some legendaries and then you win anyway. But you have to assume, you know, you have to kill them relatively quickly. Or at least have a board 
you, know, you can let you need can pass a turn with no board. That's very bad for you. And the weapons just you know make such good work of making sure that doesn't happen. That I yeah I feel like warrior is favorite here, not by a lot, but I think it definitely is. All right, it doesn't we'll have if... a brawl. So. Oh, you're right. Oh my goodness, that's something I didn't pick up immediately. Uh, because we kind of assume it's one of those common cards in a lot of the warrior decks, but Clem doesn't run Brawl. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's see if it comes back um, to bite him, or if it comes into play whatsoever in game number three. Maybe he doesn't need it. Clento seems to at least have a good enough start with his warrior deck that it's not really that much of a concern. Yeah, definitely. Also, I was wondering why Clint didn't pick up a Miracle Rogue to beat the Priest tag. It turns out he got banned. So... Big strategy of not banning Hunter uh, really paying off because, at least in this, this match, because it gives him the opportunity to ban the Miracle wow. Rogue. All right. Ooh, that's a great hand for Fake. That is a perfect curve. And yeah, I think if you just pick up Power Word Shield, you're just singing happy as long as your opponent doesn't have Fiery War Axe and it doesn't look like Kalento has it. Yeah. Wow, does he slam that guy? That's so bad, but. You know, I'm sure that if we go over that game in the future, he will wish he had slammed that guy. No. But I don't think it's the right play. Yeah, that's a call that um, is really difficult to make to slam a minion if you if you're really so you feeling like your opponent coin. can buff it twice. Yeah. But to be fair, you know, yeah, now he can just slam it and attack with the goal, so that's actually better. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I was saying, like, if you coin slam, it's like, you feel like you're in a really bad spot. I think the undead ghoul opens up a, a lot better possibilities. In the worst case scenario, he has double one drop, and he trades in, and you still can actually kill off the, the Undertaker. So, I think yeah. the undead ghoul opens up a little bit better possibilities here. Yeah, no, that's definitely a lot better. I've not actually seen that in his hand. Hmm. Alright, now Fake is like, well... Do I play this and allow my opponent to easily get um, a board clear of some kind? Is it worth it? I oh, think it is. he's definitely playing it. He's considering whether he attacks, I think. But I, I would not. I think you have to play it. You can just pass a turn. Yeah, that's well, pretty good for Kalento here. He gets value off that land, which he wouldn't on turn one. And you know, Priest Hand is forced here. He has to attack and play Dark Old. This doesn't have another option. At least he knows Kalanto is already using his coin, so he can't death spite the Cultist next turn. So the Cult is probably going to leave at least a turn, which is really as much as you, you need him to leave. Because you're going to play another minion next turn. Yeah, and I like the Cultist a little bit better than, um, actually, a lot better. Yeah, because he doesn't die to Fury War Axe. Yes. Which, you know, he doesn't have, because he didn't play it on turn one, but he could draw. There's no need to risk it. Or even execute. Just drop and execute. Uh, oh, yeah. And um, kill sure. off this 4-3. Which he would have done, since he has to, you know, it's very easy. Just, if he had one mana left, that would have been his play. Ooh, Circle of Healing. Huh. It's going to be pretty good with that Blade Master. It's going to stop the execute. Yeah, assuming his opponent doesn't have ability to proc damage easily, um, the Injured Blade Master, for hmm. all intents and purposes, is a very big threat because um, it's out of execute range for now. Meanwhile, Fake does have a couple of other choices here. Double Dark Cultus is also extremely difficult to deal with because now you have sort of the pseudo-guarantee, uh, barring your opponent doesn't have sciences, that you're going to be able to get off um, the buff without it uh, going to waste effectively on the board. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, at this point, I don't know, he plays the Baron even there, uh, he utilizes his mana better. The next turn he can play a 3-drop and heal, but he can also do that because he has another 3-drop. So, I feel like I would just play the Dark Cultist here, but I think both options are good. He's going to be happy with either option. Alright, Baron Rivendare is a choice for fake. Yeah, if that, if that Dark Cultist dies, this Baron Rivendare is going to be very big. Well, not very big, it's gonna be like a, a one infinite basically, but yeah, a one it's gonna be a lot of toughness. No, it's gonna Gosh. be a 113 because it's gonna proc twice. 
Oh, you're right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's insane. We could get like a the... 119 bear in this game. It's possible. Oh my, that that would be absolutely hilarious and a, a little bit sad that he doesn't have something like inner fire to kind of combo it because it yeah. just feels a little used otherwise. But it looks like that's what's going to come down to this Ooh. 113 Baron Ribbon there. <laughs> what? Uh, no, he's got double execute. There you go. Come on, Kalenta. Imagine all the accolade draws and armor gain. <laughs> okay, so Kalenta is out of executes now. So he can freely play this Blade Master and basically any other big meaning because it's only shields left. So Kalenta does have a pretty good hand here. Yeah, he plays Ledge Bash and he just answer with Faceless if he wants to or just wait to copy his Sylvanas. Both options are good. Hmm. Yeah, you might feel like it's not as It's You might feel like it's a pretty easy play to try to just use your mana cover, but really this does kind of pan out, to, or this really does apply the rest of the game of like how you want to order and sequence your cards. Because Sludge Belcher is more of a defensive maneuver. Yeah. But now he doesn't have anything to heal, so the two mana would be wasted anyway. Because basically it's between which one you want to put into play and Blood Barter is fine. You know, the only thing it doesn't do is threaten the one four. So I think if you play the Blade Master and heal it, then you actually threaten to do something meaningful next turn. So that's you know, and you actually use your mana too because you heal the three four. Of the fourth three, but this is fine too. All right, Kalento picks up Death Spite, an important card for a lot of the mid rangey minions of what this priest deck has to offer. Okay, yeah, generally you want to use the second turn of Death Spite to kill the Sludge Voucher, because then, you know, the one damage is going to finish it off. But Kalitha doesn't have that option now, so he has to basically give up his... Um, yeah. Alright, well now Fake has, a, again, a second circle of healing, so he can use the first one a little bit more liberally. He's gonna, he can put out an Ancient Blade Master, which will require his opponent to have a, the two-card combination of Shield Block, Shield Slam in order to deal with it, because we know the Executes have been used. And when you kind of utilize this knowledge of what removal Warrior has at his disposal, combined with the fact his opponent has only three cards, I think you're feeling really comfortable to start being a little bit more aggressive to fill up the board here. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I think his best choice. The problem is that well, if he plays a Dark Cultist, he's just going to die to the Death Spite. Uh, which is definitely not bad, but you know, his ledge will die as well. Small guy. But if he plays Circle of Healing, then he won't. So I think that the best play here is just attack the 1-1, one -one, play your two guys, and play a Circle of Healing. I can get behind that for sure. And Fake is running out of time. Seems like he is going to go for a variant of that play. Yeah, so that. Yeah, now the... Well, now the Dark Hole just can't die, yeah, because this Lime popping no the Death Splash from attack. Alright, well now Sylvana seems like this is the best time for her to plop down. There's no guarantee for your opponent to trade into the board, so you're most likely going to get value unless your opponent has Silence. Now Fake draws Akana's Soul Priest, a way you can kind of combo the Circle of Healing, but it's not as useful as you'd think against a classic Warrior, which is often plopping a lot of big threats this stage of the game. So you're not really trying to go for a board wipe. That's actually anti-synergy for you because you're trying to swarm the board against Warrior. Yeah, definitely. I think you know Warrior's removal is, most, is mostly damage based. So Circle of Healing is generally better used as actual healing in this matchup. Such as this was, you know, last turn. Hmm. What does he do now? Well, you Isn't either actually... ignore Sylvanas or you try to immediately pop it so that way your opponent can't dictate what she's going to do with it. Yeah, he could play Akanai and, you know, shoot Sylvanas and then finish it off. Ooh, if, he, if he goes around Sylvanas, this faceless is going to make fake pay really yeah. badly. 
And it looks like he is going to go for... Um, well, no, he still has the choice of Alcanai Soul Priest and Hero Power, but Defender Vargas implies he's going to play around it. And this can give an opportunity for Kalento to start winning back the board decisively, as Fake was just trying to do his best. Um, he's also hoping that his opponent doesn't have Brawl, by the way. This is another, um, this is another threat that he's potentially yeah, putting I'm not himself sure, under. I'm not sure how good this makes his position, though, because Kalento can just attack the 4-5 with the Sylvanas, then attack something else, you know, attack the 1-2 with the Death Spike, and that's going to kill the Sylvanas. So if that steals the 4-7 then he'll be in a lot of trouble. It could be a 4-10 by the time he steals it. Oh, right, because the Death Rattle triggers before. Yeah. Because um, because the Sylvanas doesn't die at that stage. So, yeah, that's true. You know, even not considering the fact that Kalinter has effectively another Sylvanas in his hand, uh, this this could turn out very poorly. He has to hope that Kalinter steals the 2-3 out of the 4-7. You know, if... He does also overextend a little bit. Then Alcanai Soul Priest actually does become kind of relevant. Because <laughs> then you can yeah. go for a way to kind of answer your board state. Yeah, Alcanai Sylvanas. Alcanai the combo against Sylvanas is always a little bit awkward. Okay, so he, he didn't choose to pop Sylvanas, he chose to keep Sylvanas alive. Which now is, I guess, just going to result in a board clear. Hmm. Also very sensible. I mean, if you can keep two Sylvanas. Well, this and is really difficult for the Priest to deal with because your late game scaling is much worse than uh, than the Warrior. And you need it to kind of build momentum. Yeah, In fact, um, he's really far behind. Like, the Cabal Shadow Priest doesn't allow him to open up many plays other than maybe potentially taking back... Um, the defender of Argus. Yeah, the one, the one thing I don't like about Kalento's play is that it's not fantastic against Holy Nova. Because he would just, you know, basically he's saying Holy Nova becomes a war clear now. You just attack the so fine as attack the other and Holy Nova it all the way. Well, then you lose your minions, I guess. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you're still not in a bad position. Well, it looks like the 2-5 will get stolen for Fake. Now he can take it back with the, uh, the Cabal Shadow Priest. But still, the board state has been kind of weathered for uh, Kalento. This is kind of exactly what the, the Warrior wanted, just to stall. Yeah. He's got some of his best cards coming up soon in his deck. Yeah, and, you know, Fake is out of great cards already. Well, he's not out, but, you know, he's gone through... Actually, he still has uh, Karen and Sylvanas of his own, so those could be his skill conditions. But yeah, game is definitely favoring Kalento right now. Right, and Cabal Shadow Priest has been used, which means uh, cards like uh, Acolyte of Pain and Unleashed, not Unleashed, uh, Unstable Ghoul can also get value. Wow, he chooses not to play anything after this Sylvanas. Yeah, no. Really trying to milk it. Yeah, so one of here puts you in a position like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Because Fake doesn't want to kill it, clearly. But if he doesn't, Kalento's just going to snipe his creatures one by one. Which is what happened now. So, I mean, Kalento's... Uh, I think Fake's best play here is attack the 4-1 the to the face, attack the 4-5 into the Sylvanas, and then play Alcanite and finish the 4-1, which is going to get stolen. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. And you know, it's not actually a bad position for him considering how the game was two turns ago. His opponent had two Sylvanas, now the board is clear and he has the only guy. Well, for now, until Kalento can seize back uh, potentially with whatever he draws. Oh yeah, until Kalento plays one of his five cards in the end that, you know, are all decent. All right, and uh, I, I kind of like it. You know, Kalento already making some moves that uh, are a little unconventional, but... He's really trying to maximize the power of his legendary cards. Uh, and Fake, of course, doing a good job responding to it. Keeping this Alcanai Soul Priest as a circle of healing as a, also just a, his last default option in case uh, anything went wrong with the Sylvanas steals. Yeah, for sure. So here, there was, was this... Alright, go on. 
Oh well, yeah, there's, there's a couple of things that Clunzo can do. He can play a lot of the smaller minions and try to get as much Acolyte of Pain value and try to draw back. Or he can try to uh, contest immediately what's on the board with like the Sludge Belcher. And I think this is good because you're not really afraid of uh, what this Alkanai can do. Because even if Circle of Healing came down, it kills itself. And then you have like... Um, well, and you're just kind of dealing with the Akanai itself, and you draw a card, so I think this is okay. Yeah, you guarantee at least two cards from the Acolyte of Pain, which, at this point, you're very happy to take. I must consider... But not at least two, unless, you know, if he plays Circle, you only get one, but... Normal spot. But if you think, what do you do? Do you just go for it? It looks board. like you have no other choice. There's no way to keep this Akanai alive as long as Unstable Ghoul is there. So you can't even get value off of attacking or hero power first. And if this isn't the case, most likely you're just going to play Sludge Belcher and just kind of have the strongest minion on the board once again. Yeah. And at least he denies a second card from the Acolyte of Fane this way. Ooh, Kalento draws Shield Block Shield Slam. And that's a good way to remove the Akanai. And that is second the, the second land. one. Wow. Yeah. And Faith has no hand now. Uh-oh. So, Kalenda has a better board and a better hand. The only thing Faith has going for him is that he's a higher life total, but at this point, that doesn't oh, actually gosh. matter. Oh, gosh. You have to heal your opponent to draw cards, but then you open yourself up to But you do a that, you do, stuff. your minion just gets attacked then. Yeah, it looks yeah, like your I ending turn. Done. Oh no, this is for fake in the past couple of draws, and Kalento has some of his best. He's got Ysera <laughs> off the top, and that is an impossible card for Priest to deal with because it's 4 attack, 12 health. You need mind control for that. Yeah, which I don't think he runs. Mm. Uh, but there is a way to deal with it. You know, pot steal a shield slam and a way to. Sorry, uh, an execute and a way to damage it, but. Pretty hard to do, especially since that sledge pressure is in the way. So this game is pretty much over now. Yeah, I don't see a way for Fake to deal with Ysera. She's going to continue to put out damage every single turn and yeah, draw yeah. cards. And you even, I mean, that's just one of the several legendaries you have to deal with. At least Fake knows his opponent doesn't have Alex Straza yet. So I guess he still has a few <laughs> turns to kind of plan out maybe a comeback. Yeah. And he has a Gromosh. Is there, oh, there's Alex Straza. Just <laughs> he doesn't know anything. <laughs> oh. There's the Gromosh Isera, Isera's Awakening combo, which hits oh for a goodness. lot of damage. PV, this has escalated so quickly. Yeah, you know, the board was clean two turns ago, and there's two, three legendary dragons. Oh, man. And, you know, I'm kind of surprised Fake didn't even attack a little bit beforehand to try to remove one damage off the board and heal, but it could feel kind of inconsequential at this stage. Kalento is going to rebound and take a series lead 2-1 uh, off of his warrior deck, which has been tried and true. And he's going to use uh, Ysera Awakens. Again, a little bit of an unflashy finish, but at this stage, I'm not expecting much for Kalento to go for any kind of spectacular kill. Yeah. So, okay, yeah, this matchup was, you know, it went about how it should, I think, which is if the Priest deck doesn't get to a very good early lead, it's probably not going to win the late game. This gets outclassed by cards like King Zero. So, it can have been like a big surprise for Fake. Yeah, no doubt. That Priest deck just sometimes gets. Uh completely cut off and then can't do anything from that point on. Meanwhile, Fake is going to turn to his Ramp Druid as his last deck to potentially win this series. And, uh, you know, Ramp Druid against the Warrior deck is all about that late game scaling that we talked about. And it seems like Fake is going to be taking after um, stream uh, streamer known as Dog, who recently joined, I believe, Complexity Gaming as uh, a professional Hearthstone player now. So congrats to Dog, by the way, as a kind of cool shout out to him. And another homage as to another deck that Fake is taking and paying the proper respects. Yeah, and there's a pretty interesting list. It has one Harrison Jones, which should be pretty good against Kalento's Warrior deck. Oh, which I don't think we saw in the last few. Also one big game hunter. Which, you know, not necessarily great in this matchup. It does kill Ragnaros and Alexstrasza and Gromash sometimes, but it's a card I really like in this kind of Druid deck. Because he generally doesn't have good ways to deal with those minions, so mm -hmm. you know, just add something to the deck that he didn't have before. So it's a pretty good one off to have. 
Yeah, you know, for a long time, I, I felt like BGH was really important in Ramp Druid decks because if you're playing control matchups, the one thing you're afraid of is if, it's, is if your opponent copies your minion with Faceless on, say, like Ragnaros, and how do you answer it back? You have to yeah. be able to kill <laughs> off your own big minions that might get copied. So Big Game Hunter was almost an auto-include. But then, you know, nowadays people feel like they can take it out a little bit more liberally. Uh, but this is Fake's ability to answer some of the bigger minions that come his way. Game number four is about to begin, so let's jump on the board and see if Kalento can continue his momentum or will Fake even it up and send it into game five uh, and be able to use maybe Innervates or things like Harrison Jones slash BGH uh, to try to win this matchup for him. Harrison Jones in the opening hand for Fake, but he's thinking about tossing it back, which kind of surprises me here, PVDDR. Yeah, I mean, as much as it's a good card, you know, this deck has a lot of late game and not that many early plays. So I think you have to toss it back, uh, hoping that you would draw some action. Because, you know, what would happen if he tossed those other two back and his two cards were Sylvanas Ancient of Lore? You know, his hand would have a 5, a 6, and a 7 cost me. So I think it's, you know, as much as you want their Harrison Jones, you cannot afford it. If your hand was already early game cards that you were planning on keeping, then you could also keep the Harrison Jones because that would guarantee you know a reasonable curve. But when you have nothing else, I think you just you can't go for it. It's too risky. Right, he's shoving for wild growth as best as he can. That's just the the dream opening hand. Innervate's great, uh, but the implications in a control matchup of having extra mana is much more powerful. Oh my goodness, turn three ancient four. <laughs> yeah, we're probably gonna see that. You know, especially well, since he, the alternative is just hero power attack, then that would definitely a good use of those inner rates. The good news for Kalanto is he can respond to this. The bad news is his opponent's uh, been able to draw into other powerful cards too, like his second Ancient of Lore, and this is kind of what the Druid can capitalize on. And as a ramp Druid, sometimes you can play even a little bit more aggressively because of it. Yeah, Kalanto's going to have to use his coin to get rid of that guy, but that's definitely worth it. And yeah, the issue in this matchup is that, you know, just like that Ancient of Lord, there are a lot of other minions that can only be answered by either Shields or Execute. So, but we, we've seen Kalento play this matchup before, and he came out ahead, so... I think could definitely happen now. Alright, well, now we just start becoming... Now it starts becoming, um... A battle of the big minions as it starts to get up a little bit in the mana count. And this is where going first really does pay off in spades. A lot of people, again, always like, oh, I, I wish I had coins so that way I can put out something a little earlier and I have an extra card. But in these control matchups, uh, it's really coming down to who can put out a bigger threat and your opponent has to always respond. But then one deck, one deck that's really great at that is Control Warrior because they can slide into one removal and still play a reasonable threat. Um and be able to leverage that. And that's why it's so important sometimes to keep your opponent's armor low, uh, be able to exhaust removal, and try to bait out things so that way you're able to be in a good position for your cards like Scenarius to be the checkmate. Yeah, definitely. And here we see, you know, he could have Wrath and attacked, and he, he chose, understandably, chose to draw a card and use his zero power because he doesn't care about three damage to himself nearly as much as he cares about drawing an extra gigantic draft. Right, fake. I mean, just starting to pile it in. Um, has to kind of continue to build up a good card count. That's also another really important thing about these control matchups and why Ancient of Lore just feels like in, like one of the best cards Druid has at his arsenal because uh, you put out a reasonable threat and you're drawing cards. So that way you can pick the removal optimally. Yeah, definitely. And though, to be fair, he did use you know, two cards to draw two cards to interface. But... Yeah, the next one is just going to be extra cards. Yeah, and, and it was all, also the scenario where if the opponent didn't have the ability to remove it with, um, you know, slam execute or shield block, coin shield slam, he would be doing five damage a turn and really giving his um, giving himself a big lead because uh, whatever smaller minion comes out, whether it was Senjin, uh, Sludge Belcher, the Ancient of Lore would have been able to bully it. Oh yeah, definitely. No, it's definitely worth it. You know, that was the best possible outcome for Colento was that. Still block shield slam, and you know you're still fine with that. So, yeah, a lot of interesting options here. Both players have pretty stacked hands.
fuck do you yeah. do here? Hmm. Well, as a high priority, generally speaking, I like denying the draw off the Acolytes. So that's most likely going to be attacked. The question becomes, do you want to develop this Ancient of Lore? Do you feel you want to develop something else? Whether it's Sylvanas, because Sylvanas comes down second and steals the second body of Karen, Or, I, I think Dewey the Claw is a much weaker play than Sylvanas. So I think yeah. it's just Sylvanas or Ancient of Lore. I like Sylvanas a little bit more, I think. But, you know, this... This will make your next turn better at the cost of making your this turn a little bit worse. Oh, two cairns is very difficult to deal with. Druid needs those Keeper of the Groves in order to answer immediately. And um, it's not yeah. easy to kind of go burn through this board here for uh, the Druid deck. So there are a lot of, you know, well, oh, there's a way. <laughs> there are a lot of, you know, 5-5 five, five guys. So Cairn is not that fantastic. You know, it's obviously good. It's very hard to deal with, but you know, Sylvanas actually outmatches Karen, for example. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And Sylvanas' timing is very key. In fact, um, I, you talk to players like Tides of Time, and he says Sylvanas is his card that he values the most in control matchups by far. Yeah, the thing with Sylvanas is that you know there are a lot of games in which you're. You feel like you're winning by a lot, and your opponent plays Sylvanas, and you're like, oh, I guess that's how I could lose. You know, yeah. It's just a, ve a very annoying card to play against. All right. Oh, by the way, um, Fake does have combo, so you just want to keep in mind, do I ever have the ability to kill my opponent? Still kind of a ways away off, but just kind of keep that in the back pocket here for Fake. Which is cool, because you know a lot of a lot of Ram Druids also cut the combo because they felt like it wasn't doing too much. Um, you know, he's not trying to be aggressive, uh, the, and you're trying to have to load up on more threats. Uh, but I feel like including one copy of the combo keeps your opponent honest, so that way, um, if they ever get a little, they overextend a little bit too much with their health, you can always just end the game as well. Yeah, and sometimes you know if people have been removing, then you also catch people off guard with your ramp deck. Because if you play against Colento's Droid, you know, everyone is always keeping their life total in mind. And against this deck, people can't. Because if they just play too conservatively, you're going to start dropping big minions. And they're going to win the point. You're not going to need the combo. So having the combo gives you a different uh, kill condition. Gives you a, a different way to win the game. Which, in Colento's deck, is just uh, more of the same way to win the game, basically. All right, well, Clenso's going to load up the board, play a lot of the smaller minions. Something I can definitely get behind and try to see if he can rack up his armor. Yeah. So here, does he... Probably prefers to attack with the axe rather than executing. But he could suicide his Cairn and then kill the Sylvanas. Since he played a lot of small minions for you to kill. So the worst case scenario would be just stealing a 4 or 5. So this is not too just to go for the face. Hmm. By the way, Kalento does have um, Alex Straza as well. And that's 14 damage sitting right there. So uh, there's a lot of ways for him to kind of assess the situation, maybe turn aggressive, who knows. And at the moment, we see 21 damage from combo, so it fakes a little bit off lethal. So both players in the next turn will be slightly off of what they want to be to potentially end the game. Yeah. But I, I feel like there has to be an attack from fake here, like to a minion. I don't think he can you know, just attack face and hope to kill his opponent with the combo in the next turn. Well, he could do that. It's not really that dangerous because he can't play Electraza and something else in the same turn. So he is sure he's not gonna die here. So he could just attack face and play a scenarius, for example. That that would be a pretty powerful turn. Given a nation of war. I so I think with a lot of good options here. I think none of his options are actually bad. Yeah, the problem with Ancient of um the problem with Scenarius though and something um, and attacking the face is that you allow your opponent to draw a lot of cards and gain a lot yeah, yeah, of armor. Yeah, he gains a lot of armor, that's, that's yeah. the issue, but you, you can't really prevent that, I don't think. Which is 
why I think, you know, he should probably not attack phase here. Yeah. You know, just don't try to win with the combo, you, you know, just try to win with the many very powerful minions you have in your hand, as opposed to hoping that the combo gets there, because you don't need it to. You can just, you can even use it for removal next turn. All right, so Kalanto's going to gain a lot of armor this turn. And has flexibility with how he uses his legendaries here. Still kind of mindful of Sylvanas in the back of his mind, though. Yeah, for sure. He does have his own Sylvanas, but... That's pretty dangerous to play when your opponent steals it. Yeah, generally as a rule of thumb, the second Sylvanas is superior to the first because of Death Rattle. Not to mention that you can play the second Sylvanas and potentially steal the first Sylvanas if you have a way to remove it. So there's there's advantage there, but the board is so convoluted to the point where you don't have anything guaranteed and you might have a really bet poor trade if Sylvanas ends up going for um, like a, a switcheroo here. Using yeah. Sylvanas. And Kalento, like, Kalento has seen that his opponent has 8 cards in hand, and he can't be feeling very good about it. So I imagine he, you know, he has to, he feels like he has to do something. Otherwise his opponent is just gonna play a gigantic minion every turn for the rest of the game. Ah, that was probably one of the worst targets possible available to Kalento. And it seems like he's gonna go for an execute on the, uh, the scenario, so that way he can kind of have a really strong ability to wipe the board. And it hits the Bane body, Ooh. which is the best target. And Fake does have BGH. Okay, um, so sorry. He's... Oh, my stream just, I think I lagged that a little bit. It just moved to this game. Moved to this this particular turn. And, oh, where, where did the board go? It disappeared. Ragnaros made it go poof. <laughs> he turned up yeah. the heat, and Bane couldn't handle it, so he got out of the kitchen. And now Fake can respond immediately with a 7-drop and a BGH. And I feel like that's probably his best course of action. I mean, the Ragnaros is the highest priority, but you still want to evaluate the situation. Um, think about how much removal has he spent. He did use a Shield Slam, he used an Execute. Does he have anything more? Is playing Ancient of War, is there a better play than this? But I think it's by far his best course of action. Yeah, it has to be that. It's just so perfect, seven and three. And, you know, not that this matters much, but you know, he can't possibly get better. Ooh. Okay, so... Kalinta can get rid of the 510, but... Yeah, he does have Sylvanas to get rid of the next 510. So that could potentially be pretty good for Kalinta. Yeah, I was just thinking about the possibilities you can synergize with Sylvanas and shield slamming it. But, of course, Sylvanas and Shield Slam are like two removals, like we say all the time. So, unless it's one of your ways to effectively steal the biggest and strongest minion in your opponent's deck, uh, you often want to separate them, unless you feel like a situation is good enough otherwise. Meanwhile, uh, Kalento is still sitting on a board where he can kind of use these armor smiths to gain a lot of health and Shield Slam to remove it, and even play... Um, you know, a Sylvanas or an Unstable Fool. Hmm. Do you, he could attack the Big Game Hunter as to make, you know, Sylvanas unkillable by hero power. I have no time for games. But... Yeah. yeah, but now the swipe does become the ability to kill it. But then you, I guess you use up a lot of your opponent's mana, and that paves the way for Alex Straza. Ah, he has Keeper of the Growth. That's another way you can kind of deal with it if you want to play minions. But I think yeah. uh, Keeper of the Growth is best served as well. I think, um... Well, you can't play Ancient of War here, because it's just going to get attacked by Sylvanas and get stolen. Right. I think this turn, you, you kind of spend some removal um, of some kind. Whether you use Keeper of the Grove to try and address the Sylvanas, or maybe even kill off the... Uh... You, can kill, you can actually wipe the board here. Yeah, you could just kill Sylvanas. Hmm, like with swipe and hero power and then you know, kill the ones. I think that's the best play. Because it doesn't add much to his board, but it sets up for a very good turn next turn. For the wilds. 
Well, that's going to be subjective based on what Warrior does. Um, because Warrior looks like we'll be dropping that Alexstrasza, barring any kind of other magnificent draw off the top of Kalento's deck. Meanwhile, Fake still has some of the best cards here waiting. He's got uh, Combo, he's got Ancient of War and Druid of the Claw, but he has to have a way to contest it. Ooh, that card's huge. Walker. He could combo and kill the Alexstrasza. Yeah, are you afraid of Black Knight? I think you you probably should be. I mean, Kalento doesn't run it, but I think most lists would run it. So he has had a chance to play Black Knight many turns already, and he hasn't played it. So you know, you know that that one card he has in hand is not a Black Knight. That unstable goal. But yeah, I don't think I would play around Black Knight now, but. Possible that it just comboing to kill the Alexstrasza is better regardless of Black Knight. I don't think so. If she wanted to stream Black Knight, she should probably just play the Sunwalker. Okay, well, implies with the wild growth that you will play Sunwalker. It's one of the best yeah. ways to answer a big giant minion like this because the Divine Shield does so much work. Yeah. So it's going to make that minion, you know, a 413 now, effectively. All right, well, what does Kalento pick up here? Needs something to deal with this Sunwalker, or else she's going to get a lot of value. Slam is one of the key cards. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. the perfect card. It gets rid of Divine Shield and draws you a Ledge Voucher. Not bad at all. He's at 33 health, and Shield Block can be used a little bit more liberally, but I think you still want to keep in mind the, the possibility that your opponent plays combo, so get some good... Um, don't, don't miss the opportunity cost of losing the armor up for two versus cycling through. Yeah, unless you absolutely need to draw something, you know, turning your Shield Block into a gain three life, effectively, three armor, because you'd rather just hero power, I think. All right, Fake picks up his second Keeper of the Grove, so that gives him the ability to answer this um, Sludge Belcher. In the back of your mind, you did see something like Ysera, though, and that's... I think you need to keep this Keeper of the Grove um, and preserve it as long as you can because you know your opponent runs Ysera. That's the only way you can deal with it, unless you can either kill him or you want to use Force of Nature slash whatever's on the board to remove, and that's not even a guarantee, so... I feel like that's just going to be there as much as you might want to deal with them. Um, yeah, I mean, if he board. uses the combo here, he could clear the board. But that does spend his entire turn. Alright, well, it looks like he's going to go for it. Something I can definitely get behind, and he even keeps the Keeper of the Grove at uh, yeah. full health here. Yeah, this is the good thing about about this ramp deck that you can use the combo and know that you're still able to win the game even though your opponent's a very high lap total. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did uh, Was there a slight misplay of some kind? Usually when players are doing that, they're kind of like thinking over what did I do wrong, perhaps. I don't know. Maybe she's just sad for having to use the combo. Maybe he sh felt like he shouldn't have attacked with his head. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he just said that <laughs> he didn't want to use those cards. By the way, Klemto gets uh, two cards that are probably pretty useless, and now it's passed and given initiative back over to Fake. And that's got to make you a little hesitant, but at the same time, slightly happy that it looks like Warrior kind of hit dead end draws here. Yeah, and you know, his what could those draws be? You know, Klemto has five mana. Didn't play anything. So he's got to be thinking, you know, this is probably an execute. So he saves that ancient of war. Well, now that you don't have combo, it's not like cat form is going to be putting on an insane amount of pressure to end the game with, um, you know, using a combo out of the to combo your opponent uh, into lethal range. But at the same time, you're protected and you kind of reduce your ability to get. And if Black Knight was going to come out, it would be coming on this engine anyways. Yeah, and he's got to be thinking about Brawl, too. You know, Kalenta doesn't have it, we know that, but he doesn't. And he probably doesn't want to play his mass means anymore. So I imagine if Kalenta just passes next turn, for example, he would just not commit anything else to the board. He would just attack and pass. 
He needs a big minion here. Alright. Lothab is bigger than what he had. Not like <laughs> Ysera, Um But, you know, Kalento's also used some of his biggest minions already too. Ragnaros and uh, Alex Straza come to mind. Two of the biggest legendaries that he has at his disposal. Yeah, he still has Gromash and Ysera left. I think those are, you know, his best options. He's used Karen too. Hmm. Well, with Harrison Jones and Ancient of Lore, and even the Keeper of the Grove to silence a minion that can be problematic, whether it's, you know, Ysera slash whatever big minion that he hasn't been um, able to kill off yet, I think Fake's in a pretty good position here to start taking advantage of this game. Yeah, definitely. Well, there's Zombie Chow again making up here. <laughs> zombie Chow. That old little gotcha. rascal thinking he's relevant. <laughs> In a control matchup. Yeah, so things looking pretty good for Fake here. You know, but again, he's got to be terrified of Kalento's three cards, which have been in his hand for two turns now. You know, probably not thinking on stable goal because the first thing you, th you know, most people would just have played an unstable goal out there, you know, because it's a minion, you can. It makes sense not to because it's just going to get attacked. But when you think, why can my opponent be holding? You're not going to be thinking, I'm meaning that he could have played but didn't. You know, you're going to be thinking, oh, it's cards like Brawl, it's cards like Execute. Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly got to be Brawl. We're this late into the game. It's been lasting around 20 minutes or so. Yeah, and but fake is just, Master also. Yeah, okay. meticulously calculating. Oh, do I want to play a lot of minions on the board? Or am I going to trade in and try to be a little bit more defensive? And he is. He's going to play around. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I thought he was going to use us something like the Grove here. Attack. Uprooted! Oh my goodness! Okay, that d does make you better against Black Knight. Guess so. So he is at 11, which is kind of a dangerous life double. You know, Cruel Taskmaster plus Grimash could kill him if only Kalenta, you know, gets rid of that uh, taunt guy. And he still doesn't have leap on the next turn. What now? Yeah, Klento can still turn this around. He's got Death Spite, like you mentioned. Um, and it's not easy for the Struid to heal up. Healing Touch is, has been cycled out a while ago for the Struid deck. For, uh, and he's Ram been Druids. through both his Ancient of Lars already, you know, when he played very early and. Better. Not so early, but, you know, he doesn't have any anymore. Oh, but then Harrison Jones becomes an important disarming tool to remove the proc. <sighs> of the death bite prematurely so you can't get the value off of being able to uh oh man in fact yeah. you can Ooh, go for a double two. value off the harrison jones yeah and that's gonna you know clear the board on kalenta's side because the the death spite is gonna trigger then goal is gonna trigger when he attacks it with the two fort so that death bite belongs in a museum, and now the board's <laughs> clear, and all of a sudden, there's just um, very little ways for Kalento to win from this spot, considering that there's still a taunter, and he doesn't have even a way to activate his Gromash, and his opponent's sitting at a tantalizing health just above the range for Gromash to finish. Yeah, at this point, you know, he's just pretty hopeless. Mm. Yeah, again, he's probably trying to see, you know, what happens when top decks brawl, which is probably the only card he cares about at this point. And besides that, he can just go ahead and play the Harvest Goal, and it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, it's at least it gives you a 2 1 minion as well in case anything goes wrong. Oh, and Kalento <laughs> gets Gromash. I mean, he only had six cards left or so, uh, but I mean, this yeah. is kind of what he was setting up for. And that's why he played Gromash, by the way, so that way he can actually potentially end the game next turn. Uh, but now Fake, it doesn't matter he's top decking um, Harvest Golem in the late stages of the game. You're kind of usually sad if you're the control player, you're getting their smaller minions this late. But Warrior is also running out of win conditions. You're just worried about Ysera as the final card and you even have a way to answer at the moment. Yeah, and so if that Harrison Jones hadn't come up, Kalenta would have won this turn. That's right. If it came out yeah, earlier so. on the Fiery War <laughs> or something. Yeah, it's probably pretty disappointing for Kalenta. Okay, 
Fake has to also be careful. He's close to fatigue. I don't think Wait. it'll come down to the point where he'll get fatigued out of the game because I believe the last threat remaining in Kalento's deck is, in fact, the Yasera. And he's got a few other small things like another zombie weapon, chow. perhaps. <laughs> yeah, zombie chow and another weapon. But don't underestimate the power of something like Yasera Awakens to potentially swing the state of the board. And Zombie Chow will keep Warrior alive a little bit longer. And it is a Yasera, so what, what card Kalento draws could be the one impacting the rest of this game. But no, it's a Laughing Sister. That's one of the worst cards you could possibly get. Yeah, at least, you know, it's probably going to suicide a lot of things into that. He could ignore it and just silence it. But that's pretty dangerous if Kalento did draw the... The thing that does five damage for everything. So, right. I imagine he's probably just gonna. But killing it also makes the board super dangerous because then you could die to fatigue. That's true. Do you run out of damage yourself? I think you just have to kill it though. No, it's gonna leave you with two minions in play if you use Wrath mm -hmm. and. But then you can't cast Ledge Badger that same turn. Mm -hmm. But perhaps yeah, I... his plan is just ignoring it. Okay, well, he's also just saying if you have Brawl, well, good luck and God bless. Hopefully it doesn't land on the wrong side of the coin. But yeah. Klepto, we know yeah. he doesn't have Brawl. Yeah, even if he plays the board super now, he would be at two life, and his opponent would get three minions. So he would be able to attack one, and, you know, maybe just die to the other two, even if he armors up. That Sludge Belcher is so huge too, because it'll disallows him from being able to pick up the trades and play defensively. Kalento's gonna concede, and the control war goes to the Ramp Druid, and Fake ties it up and sends Kalento to the last game and potentially being able to sneak a win in his first opening series of this tournament. Yeah. Is that Kalento's first loss in the first day, if that happens? He went 3-0 last time, right? That's right. He was undefeated, in fact, the entire tournament. Uh, and now it's kind of coming down to hopefully him being able to win this to keep the con consistent streak alive. Uh, but Fake's the one trying to upset him from the open bracket and proving his name. Now, it will go down to the Hunter versus the Ramp Druid, which, you know, the Hunter does have the ability to go through these big minions with Hunter's Mark, but there are a lot of taunts that Hunter has to go through, and it's not exactly the easiest if uh, Kalento gets a bad start, draws on the wrong side, and then top decks Leopard Gnome when he needs something else. And Kalento only has one Hunter's Mark. That's the first Hunter deck I've ever seen that doesn't run two Hunter's Marks. Oh, you're right. Huh. And that's pretty key for this matchup. You know, he has even less ways to deal with taunts than most. Well, if he's not banning Hunter, he feels like his opponents might be playing a lot of Hunter themselves and maybe feels like he can get away with only one. That's actually a really important note, and that might be the difference maker, but who knows? He's not playing high mains. He's playing a very aggressive snowball Hunter that's built to kill other Hunters. Snake Trap is amazing in the, the mirror. You have Undertaker and Leopard Gnome, um, and he's got a lot of ability to push out damage very quickly. Let's go into game five and see if Kalento can close this out, or will Fake be the one to upset the reigning champion? Yeah, also Kalento might be thinking, you know, oh, most of my opponents are going to ban Hunter, because that's the default ban. And if they don't, that's because they think they can beat it. So what kind of Hunter deck do I want to beat people who think they're beating Hunter? You know, and maybe he decided that, you know, that's the very aggro version. All right, well... It gets the good start, has a 1 and 2 drop, and even a Houndmaster kind of added in. Oh, Fake does have a wild growth, though, and that's an excellent start, considering that he has Harvest Golem to kind of continue to push it out. So uh, all of a sudden, maybe things can kind of turn for the Druid. He's got a very good start. Yeah, he does have a good curve for us to go Keeper to grow. You know, if that Death Spinner was Undertaker, then this game would be a lot different, but... As it is, you know, the moment he plays a big taunt guy, Kalento is just not going to have a lot of things to do. That's right. No, he does have two Houndmasters, but... Hmm. Kalento also doesn't have 
high mains, which is often a very important card against Druid. Wow, he's gonna, well, he he's gonna seek for a card off Web Spinner and he gets Silver Bag Patriarch. He found one. <laughs> wow, that play I did not expect. I just I assumed he was gonna go for the face and play Flare and eventually Hunter Creeper. That card's actually pretty annoying to deal with. Oh, but Fate picks up Innervate so he can kind of kill off the beasts immediately and claim board dominance. This is starting to look pretty bad for Kalento. Yeah, I don't... I think it just play Keeper here. Hmm. I mean, this deck has a lot of expensive minions, so having Innervate in your hand, you know, is not that bad. You don't have to use it immediately. Like, you know, just playing... Or the nature of Druid of the Claw here. You could play the Druid and attack the one for That would certainly not be bad. What to do? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like if you play the Druid, you deny the ability to use Houndmaster. But the Keeper yeah. of the Grove, of course, like you said, plays more on the curve. Yeah, and Houndmaster is not going to be that effective. It's going to be good, obviously, but. Yeah, maybe playing the Druid was a better play just because of Houndmaster. Also, you, you, your Druid is not threatened because it's going to be a 4-3, and your opponent is going to have two one ones So we would die to the bone. Yeah, I don't know. Druid also pretty important as a taunter. So not, you know, using that early on definitely gives you a good advantage. All right, speaking of advantage, after this Houndmaster drops, uh, Fake does have the ability to kind of push through, even with something like Savage or Unstabilize. And I think if Kalento's late game has been, you know, effectively sacrificed so that way he can have a stronger early game and he's not having a good board presence whatsoever against what Fake's able to consistently put out, He's going to be hitting some real big stop gaps unless he draws something like uh, Buzzard Unleash. And even then, does he have enough ability to push through without his high mains? Yeah, I mean, how? And with only one Hunter's Mark, you know, his opponent plays a 4 6 and a 5 10. How, how good are those Unleash tokens going to be? You know, you're going to draw a bunch of cards, but you have nothing to draw into. Those cards are just bigger than anything that is in your deck. Yeah, I have to imagine Kalenta did not have this matchup in mind when he constructed his Hunter deck. Hmm. Hmm. Does Fake want to use Savage Roar here? That is the that is the question at the moment. All right, Drew the Claw seems to be what he chooses instead. Savage Roar allows you to basically kill off um, a lot of what's going on. Oh my, he's going to open himself up to unleash the hounds. Yeah, it seems so. Wow, very ballsy play. Yeah, it's not great for him if, if Kalenta has unleashed because his follow-up is... You know, it's just going to be harmless going. You know, Fake could feel like he's has the option to be the aggressor. I'm also... Uh, so, so he's keeping his combo together. So this is uh, to finish my thought. Also, I wonder if really that use of Innervate was kind of appropriate considering that he might be drawing into um, some of his bigger minions. Like if he picks up um, Scenarius or something equivalent to that then uh, he's starting to hit some of his like bigger minion curves where he might want to use Innervate earlier on. It's it's still like not the best mana use um, or mana turns right now because like he's going to be on six and there's still a lot of cards that he'd want to play that's cost seven and nine. Yeah, at the same time, he doesn't know Kalenta doesn't have a good late game because we know that if he just, you know, doesn't die, he's just going to win the game. True. Because, you know, Kalenta doesn't have any high needs. But he doesn't know that. So maybe he thinks, you know, has to put some, has to be somewhat aggressive. Or as we know, if he just blows the board with punts, he's just gonna win. All right, Fake draws into a six mana minion though, so it pays off. Hmm. And Sylvanas will be the biggest minion on the board uh, by a large margin. 
Palento can use Houndmaster number two, by the way, and start drawing and cycling through with flares, but he needs to kind of find something else. It's not going to be a cycle for high man. It's going to be a cycle for cards like Leopard Omen and Undertaker, and we're talking about some of the top decks that this hunter's capable of when you don't have the draws. Colento's under a lot of stress. He realizes that this situation is pretty dire. And it has to be killing Colento that he's effectively playing with one last card in his entire match, and he hasn't had a window to use that flare yet. You know, generally when you draw a flare, the first thing you want to do is just get rid of it. But it seems like he might not have an opportunity to use it again. So he's, he's basically playing with, you know, two less cards than his opponent has way less options because of how those cards have constrained his mana. All right, well, maybe he can get some damage with the bow, but... Oh, but Keeper of the Grove for fake. And that can disarm uh, the... The three four haunted creeper that's been hound mastered, and that allows him to basically kill off the rest of this board here. Yeah, definitely. And still follow up the harvest golem. I mean, you leave up a one two, but I mean everything else seems pretty decent from this point on. And uh, fake again still has the combo. He's getting closer to turn nine. And if he can kind of put out these sticky minions, all of a sudden this Ram Druid has the possibility to kill off your opponent. Yeah, ooh, he's not gonna go for the silence. Is he gonna silence the mad scientist instead? Or is he gonna shoot it? If it chooses to silence the mad scientist, that's very interesting. Okay. That might put, you know what? He really yeah, has no respect for Dangerous life total. Yeah, and for his life total. That is true. I mean, Kalinta has 11 damage in play right now. Oh, you're right. We're forgetting about how much damage he can kind of push back at his opponent, which might be what he needs to do in this scenario. Yeah, likely. You're not going to win the trading war. You're not going to win the late game. And he's got Leroy in hand, too. Ooh, so, but he did choose to attack his, his opponent's minion instead of going for the face. That's also very interesting. Because if I was Colanto, I would be thinking, how am I going to win this game? I'm just going to, you know, try to burst my opponent out. But he thinks, him attacking his, his opponent's minion here thinks he can, means he thinks he can still win a fair fight. So, you know, he, he, he's not desperate yet from his point of view. Which, if I was him, I would be. But. Well, it's not over till it's over, and this Druid is left top decking as well. Druid of the Claw comes into the hand of Fake. And maybe we start seeing um, him just be a little bit more frantic. Maybe if he feels desperate enough to kind of remove what's on the board, he uses cards like Force of Nature, but I still feel like he's in control of this game. Yeah. I mean, that definitely looks better for him, I think, but he could still very easily lose. I think you can take an opportunity to steal the um, steal the Undertaker if you use Sylvanas to crash in and you use Drew the Claw to charge here. And that could be a good opportunity for you to start taking away your opponent's tools. In fact, this is what he's going to do. Do you, do you want to steal the Undertaker or the... Oh, he gets Angry Chicken. Oh, okay. no. That is the... I mean, I mean, I guess it's something for the buzzard, but uh, that's probably the worst thing. Imagine if it was King Crush or something to give him <laughs> some damage. It is, it is feasible that stealing the webs could have stolen the web spinner. Just attack differently. Well, I guess um, you deny a draw, but you take a little bit more damage. I think you're at 18 health. You kind of want to prioritize health. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you could have stolen... Well... Well, Kalento's web spinner really laid an egg here. Angry Chicken <laughs> yeah. is probably the worst draw he probably could have gotten other than Captain's Parrot. Yeah, especially since his two Hound Masters are gone, so he can't even pump it. You know, I have lost to a pumped up Angry Chicken. It was not fun. <sighs> that's, that's terrible. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. 
I don't see a way for Kalanto to get out of this. He's gonna get the Leroy damage in now, but now there's full combo from yeah. Fake, and the Force of Nature Savage Vore patience has paid off for our German player who's been coming from the open bracket, and he's gonna upset Kalento three to two and jump out to a 1-0 overall record in the group. Yeah, I can't even count how much damage that's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot of damage. Yes. Um, let's see. Oh, he actually doesn't get the full. 10 plus 10, so that's, uh, or plus 20. I think that's like 30 damage-ish. All right, so Colenso, uh is gonna start off to, a, 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 he's gonna start off 3-0, but then follows it up with a defeat, so he's evened up at one apiece. And Fake, if he continues up this momentum, might be advancing in first place in this group if he can take out one other player and then be in a good position to. And what an intense series, you know, it started off where we thought Kalanto was going to kind of roll with his momentum and continue to push through. Uh, but in the end, Fake was able to win with this ramp druid and show off his control skills. Well played. Yeah, very interesting. I think a lot of this tournament is going to hinge on whether Kalanto can uh, defeat the ramp druids with his Andre deck. Because, you know, most other players seem to be playing the ramp druid variant. And... You know, those decks are probably not going to get banned, so they will meet at some point. And whether Kalenta's version is superior or not is, is going to define a, a lot of how those games go. Excellent observation. It also depends a little bit on how the rest of his group does, which we'll be seeing after a quick break. Firebat versus 6 0 is the next match lined up. So when we return, more action and more Hearthstone here at VGVN at number three with Frodan and PVDDR. We'll be right back. 